Welcome back to Today Rocket Science. I'm Adam Balkin. Now, to become the science, technology, engineering, and math stars of tomorrow, it's going to take a lot of hard work, but you don't have to do it all on your own. Let's take a moment and hear from some mentors who are doing their part to lend you a helping hand. Students need to see other students to interact with science, to get a sense of that science is something that they can do as well. It's a chance for high schoolers to do real hands-on science in a university lab and get one-on-one -on -one help from STEM students at NYU. It's the ARISE program, or Applied Research Innovations in Science and Engineering. It brings teens in to do work in fields ranging from civil engineering to molecular design and robotics. And the college mentors don't go easy on them because they're in high school. This is serious science. We're trying to degrade oligonucleotides, which are short, single-stranded pieces of nucleic acids. It's, it's much more simple than it seems, I guess. If, for, in a way, um, sp well, specifically, we're working with PTE. It's an enzyme that combats uh, organophosphates that's found in nerve gases and pesticides. We're trying to like improve agricultural conditions. For these students, it's a chance to get a glimpse at a future STEM major or career. I saw it was an opportunity to actually get a taste of what I want to do in the future. It was a little stressful because there was so much terminology I needed to um, look up and learn more about, but in the end I think I'm really happy because now I actually know what it's all about. I think they get um, the opportunity to apply their critical thinking skills and their existing scientific knowledge to problems that once they're immersed in the context, they get to feel that excitement is about science and research that every fully fledged scientist or burgeoning scientist along their different career path gets to feel. The program started in the summer of 2013. It lasts seven weeks and reached 35 high schoolers this year. Organizers say they hope the program continues to expand. And you're not the only ones getting a little extra help. This next university program is promising to help future STEM leaders rise to the challenges of tomorrow by helping teachers expand their knowledge and share it with their students. Our Bree Driscoll drops in on class. Educators gathered at Columbia University's Teachers College for a special workshop on modeling, a method to teach science, physics, and math that puts students in the role of the scientist and lets them work through experimentation. Too often right now in my classroom, they just sit passively waiting for me just to feed them information. But when modeling, they have to get up, they have to talk to each other, they have to figure out things on their own. So modeling puts students in a different role than they'd normally be in. In a traditional science class, you'd be told explicitly by your teacher, all objects fall the same rate. And then you'd have a test where you have to repeat, all objects fall the same rate. And part of the test and part of the lab is just about proving the teacher correct. In modeling, we flip that. We start by saying, how do objects fall? And some people will say, well, don't some objects fall faster than others? And we'd say, let's test that out. So we start with the experiment, and then we test to see if other objects fall at the same rate. We expand our ideas from there. Seth says when students are put in this environment, they are more interested in science and math, and teachers say it's helping those subjects stick. I have kids coming in on day one saying, I'm so glad I got your class, because they know about the method. Their, their friends have told them about what this class is like, and they enjoy it. Kids come in almost every day and say, are we doing lab today? Because they love lab work. You know, it's not something boring. This is something interesting to them. Fostering an interest that these educators hope will last a lifetime. For It Ain't Rocket Science, I'm Bree Driscoll. Now on to a summit for those who have committed to careers in the sciences, where some of the country's top female science, technology, engineering, and math stars shared some secrets which I guess are no longer secrets, to their success. It was a day all about the possibilities. Leading female power brokers came from all over the world to a summit hosted by Forbes to discuss closing the gender gap and redefining power in today's STEM workforce. Technology is at the heart of innovation today. It's been laid the foundation, and that will only continue to become true, more true as we go forward. We want women creating the technology that will change our lives. If think about it, as you solve the world's problems, climate change, overpopulation, all those kinds of very hard problems, you want to have a diverse set of people with very different life experiences creating solutions. We're at a crisis level for producing STEM graduates. In fact, the President's Council 
of advisors for science and technology estimates that over the next 10 years we're going to have to produce 1 million more engineers than is currently projected to maintain our global competitiveness. And so it's a national concern and especially with our, our, our girls. Debbie Sterling, the CEO and founder of Goldie Blocks, was among the panelists. She designed the engineering toy for girls that's become a viral sensation over the past year. I started Goldie Blocks because I studied mechanical engineering at Stanford and there were very few women. And it started to bug me and I started to wonder why are there so few girls and women in engineering and technology? Why is it that construction toys and engineering have been so popular with boys for so many years? Is it a biological difference? I did a lot of homework on it. I read all of these research articles and studies about gender differences, about cognitive development in children, about spatial skills development, and I learned something really interesting. I learned that actually uh, girls and boys are pretty much equally capable in math and science. And another leading lady in STEM took center stage at Scientific American's Education Summit, but her job may be something you never thought would exist. She calls herself a science evangelist. Her mission? To get the young people inspired to be scientists. We need people to understand why it's important for everything that we do. Everything we do, the reason why we're having this conversation is based on science, technology, engineering, and math. And I'm trying to illuminate that so that people can understand how it's embedded in our lives, how it's part of what we do. And it's also part of the human process. It's, ex it's exploration. So that's why I do what I do, just so that people can get back in touch with what I call their inner scientist. Dr. Ramirez says part of the problem is that people have a misconception of what a scientist looks like. We need more role models. We need people to see other people who do science besides the stereotypical uh, picture that we see. And that's exactly what these stellar STEM leaders hope they accomplish by sharing their stories here. All right, stop here for one more quick break then coming up. Many of us have visited a zoo, marveling from one animal habitat to the other, but did you ever wonder what goes into the care of and feeding of our favorite critters? We'll take you for an inside look at the care these animals receive and how researchers are looking to protect them in the wild. And we'll check out what's going into taking care of you as well as we join a group of young girls learning about a doctor's day-to-day -day routine. To find more hands-on science, technology, engineering, and math opportunities in your community, check out connectamillionminds.com during the break.